Again, I'd like to welcome you to our town hall meeting tonight on Harbor Springs Public Schools school reopening plan. I'd like to start off with just talking about what face-to-face -face instruction is going to look like. And that's students coming to school this year um, in person, five days a week, uh, beginning September 1st. I think the, the thing that people ask most about uh, at least as far as the questions I get, are masks. Well, masks are going to be worn by staff and students at all times except when eating, and that's kindergarten through 12th graders in the classroom, in common areas, uh, anytime that they're indoors. They'll be worn by staff and students on district buses at all times as well. Any type of medical exemptions are gonna require documentation from a health professional. Talking a little bit about health and hygiene, uh, hand washing and sanitizing two to three times per day prior to lunch or eating, in between class changes at secondary. Um, we've installed hand sanitizer dispensers in all school locations and classrooms and common areas. Um, they're the uh, uh, approved kind uh, containing enough alcohol mix uh, that's approved by the FDA. Uh, we've installed also touchless paper towel dispensers in many of our common locations uh, so students aren't uh, handling um, paper towel handles uh, or using hand dryers, uh, electric hand dryers. We'll be uh, turning those off. Um, for use. Uh, we've installed hand sanitizers on all buses. For cleaning and sanitization, we purchased state-of-the-art uh, state electrostatic cleaning equipment for each of our buildings. We've, um, we'll be concentrating on frequently touched surfaces at least every four hours. Uh, that would mean twice a day. Um, Classrooms will be sanitized between every class change. We've also hired, are in the process of hiring more daytime custodian staff to help with the increased number of uh, rooms and locations that we're gonna have to sanitize on a daily basis. Uh, the buses will be sanitized in between each use with e-mist handheld electrostatic cleaners. Spacing movement and gatherings in terms of distancing. In, in the classrooms that we can, we'll face desks forward and students six feet apart to the extent possible. If we're in phase four, right now we're in phase five. If we go to phase four, there'll be no more than one class gathered at a time. We've also procured a lot of plexiglass barriers that will be used in classrooms that have tables in which we can't socially distance students six feet apart. For movement, our K-5 students, for the most part, are in cohorts during the day. That means that they're a self-contained unit that um, either stays in their classroom or travels as a group to another classroom. Depending on our sanitization schedule, some specials at elementary may be held in the classroom. Um, we will try to minimize that to the greatest extent possible, but it all depends how quickly that we can get into a specials room and clean it in between uh, specials classes. Secondary students, uh, for one year only, we're gonna um, not only allow, but tell them they need to carry backpacks, and this is to avoid locker congregating and congestion. Uh, we'll ask our students to uh, pick up their materials in the morning, carry backpacks with them for their class schedule. Um, at, at lunch, they can do a drop, and then again, uh, for the afternoon, they need to be carrying their um, materials with them. The hallway flow in some buildings 
will be restricted. Uh, we've already made plans for some one-way hall movement in particularly the high school and stairwells. Uh, we'll, some stairwells will be only one-way stairwells. Screening and testing. For screening, um, we're going to cooperate fully with the Health Department of Northwest Michigan. Um, we're going to ask parents and guardians to sign commitment forms at the beginning of the year to screen their students for symptoms daily. Uh, symptomatic students are going to be quarantined and sent home. They may return after a negative test or medical documentation clearance. And staff will complete a daily health screening form with temperature check uh, each day, all staff members. And symptomatic staff will be sent home immediately. Now this is one of the um, things I think I get the most amount of questions about the whole screening situation and what if my child has seasonal allergies or a little sniffle or something. The um, health department has prepared a nice flow chart that really um, explains the process and not only for students but for staff and when, is, when a child or staff member should be excluded from school. So this is going to be made public after our meeting. It actually is a public document. If you look on the uh, Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, um, schools are uh, being asked to follow this. Again, we're going to take guidance from our local health department. The other thing is we're excited this year. We are expected to uh, have a school nurse hired um, by the time school starts, hopefully. And uh, we expect that person to be a great resource in terms of who needs to be excluded from school, who needs to be sent home, and for how long. As far as testing goes, again, we're going to cooperate fully with the Health Department of Northwest Michigan and follow their guidance in terms of um, positive cases. And if a student is getting tested, uh, what's the process for um, while that student's getting tested for notifying families? Um, but uh, all district families and staff will be notified if positive cases emerge. If the health department advise us to notify parents um, while a student is being tested and awaiting those results, they will let us know. Again, though, confidential law, confidentiality laws uh, will be followed um, regarding FERPA and HIPAA. Um, so names won't be released or anything like that. Uh, our food service is going to change a little bit. Um, uh, we're going to focus on grab-and-go lunches. Um, our food service personnel will have barriers for point of sales. Uh, so students won't be uh, serving themselves or visiting the food bars. Uh, things will be grab-and-go ready to go. Now, we still plan on doing some hot entrees in those grab-and-goes. Um, we're getting new um, compart compartmentalized um, uh, disposable trays that students can take and um, carry with them. So students uh, will wash hands before they eat. Um, additionally, sanitizer stations have been installed in all areas as well. Um, we're looking at multiple eating locations, including outdoors. Um, we already asked the city if we can borrow um, any unused picnic tables um, from their parks for September and October. We're going to put that request out to parents too and community members. We're going to ask um, probably get an email from me shortly that asks, do you have a picnic table that you would loan the schools? And you can write your name on the back of it. We'll ask you to drop it off at one of our school locations, tell you where, and then uh, ask you to pick it up again in November. So um, it's uh, something that we'll ask our community to help with. So uh, Blackbird students may eat in their classrooms or on a staggered schedule. Now, we've, we've looked at our uh, capacity in our cafeterias, and um, our plan is to spread our tables out 
and put three students per table with plastic barriers separating them on the table. So each cafeteria table will have plexiglass dividers um, because students aren't going to be masked while they eat. Um, and the dividers, if you can imagine a, a pie cut into three uh, equal places, uh, there'll be dividers so that um, students will have a shield with the person uh, sitting across from them. For athletics, um, we're, we're going to follow the MHSAA requirements, um, guidance from them. Uh, we've already started practices. We've been doing this already. Um, so um, as far as spectator and stadium attendance, those restrictions will be in accordance with executive orders. At this point, outdoor stadiums, for example, can see 150 if they're safely distanced wearing masks. Um, if that changes, we would change the attendance restrictions. Again, we'll go with executive orders and what the Michigan High School Athletic Association requires. For curriculum instruction for the for students that are face to face, all classes will be taught by Harbor Springs Public Schools teachers utilizing Harbor Springs Public Schools curriculum and resources. However, we are training each of our teachers in the use of Canvas Learning Management System and the Accelerate curriculum in case of school closures or a return to phase one through three. So. Um, we'll be using that a little bit when we have our students face to face so that they get some experience on these platforms in case we need to go to, to close school or a, or a classroom or um, one of our schools and or if the entire district returns. So I'm going to ask again everyone please mute. Um, So the, we need a backup um, platform in case we need to flip the switch in a relatively short period of time. Our teachers did a great job last spring. Life for them changed on March 13th. Uh, they had to teach in ways that they never taught before, um, utilizing Google Classroom as a platform. We, need to have a platform, a learning management system that is uh, a little bit more robust, that um, load, can load all the curriculum, that, are, that can account for student time spent, that um, has grading features on it. That, that is the reason why we you know, had time now to think about it, train our teachers. Um, we'll be training our teachers in August, the, this coming, this month. Uh, to use that system and exposing our students while we have them face to face, um, giving them some experience so that if we do need to flip the switch, like I said, they'll be ready. Uh, Canvas provides teachers great flexibility. They can load the district curriculum on it or modify any course content. Um, it, it's really a pretty slick system. Um, and we think that once they get used to it, the kids get used to it. It, it's really going to be great. Um, nothing will replace, in, in our minds, face-to-face -face instruction, um, but uh, at least we'll be prepared. Now we've talked about um, the option for students to go fully virtual if for some reason parents are not comfortable sending their students to school. Um, and, and that could be for a number of reasons. Uh, it could be because and I have, uh, we have family members that are at risk. My, my child may be at risk uh, medically. Um, it might be that we have um, discomfort and my child may not want to wear a mask or all the restrictions in place. I just think that um, school won't be the same and we're going to go online. Uh, we've given that option. The district will provide that 
experience at no cost to parents and students will still be Harbor Springs Public Schools students. This is for K-12 students. It'll be a high quality curriculum and instruction that meets state and national standards. And the courses match the title and overall description of the courses that we offer here in Harbor Springs. The curriculum would be provided by one of the following vendors at the district discretion, Accelerate, Pearson, Lincoln Learning, or Michigan Vir Virtual. The courses lead to credit towards high school graduation. So getting back to instruction, all classes will have a certified Michigan teacher of record. Uh, teachers may or may not be Harbor Springs public school teachers. Uh, likelihood at the secondary level, they will not be. Um, instruction is going to be mostly independent and flexible. We call that asynchronous learning with some live teacher instruction um, or synchronous learning. And if school closes due to a COVID-19 situation, fully virtual students will continue with their program. We can expect three to five hours a day of asynchronous or synchronous learning, depending on the grade level. Attendance is monitored and required by student um, progressing through the curriculum at a steady and regular pace. Um, so the uh, assessment of student work, timely and constructive feedback uh, will be provided. Grades and report cards will be issued. Um, credits earned uh, count towards high school graduation requirements here in Harbor Springs, and students will qualify for honors recognition at graduation if they take online courses during the 2021 school year. And that's something that uh, we are waiving for this year during that, um, during the COVID situation. As far as technology and access, um, we provide, as you know, one-to-one -one devices. Uh, so devices for all students. Uh, the district will provide technical support and repair on all district issued devices. Uh, internet access is required, but we would provide portable hotspot loaners if needed. The RAM virtual learning students will have the same access to athletics and extracurriculars as face-to-face -face students. And that's important to note that uh, they will be our students and we'll be able to participate in any extracurricular athletic activity. Course catalogs um, will contain elective choices, and, and most of those match other things elective. Grades 9 through 12 um, RAM virtual students may take some non core academic classes face to face that cannot be offered through virtual learning, such as BAM. So we feel this is important um, and we feel that it's not our, our position to question why would a student take some classes virtually, half their schedule virtually or five out of six virtually and one face to face. What we're trying to do is really make this work for our students the best that we can. So there's some questions and answers that I'm sure we all have uh, but I want to uh, go over some that I'm frequently asked. So who determines whether or not a student can medically tolerate a mask? Um, and this is straight from uh, the executive order requirement. Schools should require documentation from a medical professional as they do for other types of accommodations. Can parents opt their children out of wearing masks? No, the child may opt out of the requirement only if they choose to enroll in a fully remote learning environment. What recourse is there if students and families openly refuse to wear masks and they have no documentation of being unable to medically tolerate a face covering? Well, again, this comes right from the guidance from the executive order. Schools should enforce compliance with state and local requirements for students through the normal disciplinary me mechanisms. Now, our teachers are wonderful and love their kids, and um, there's going to have to be a lot of teaching about wearing face masks at all levels. So, the correct way to do it 
there's going to have to be a lot of gentle reminders. We know that. We, we know kids are kids. Um, what we're talking about is this out and out compliant, uh, non compliance, um, and defiance. That's a different story. And that would be handled um, at a personal level with the parents, family, and the administrator. Will students get mass breaks? Yes. Uh, the teachers are encouraged to take their classes outside for walks, quick breaks, socially distance, of course. Will K-1 students go to the library and check out books? Yes, hopefully on a weekly basis, socially distanced at their story time, and books will be placed in quarantine for 72 hours after they are returned before being reshelled. Will parents and volunteers be allowed in school? Um, it is going to be necessary to limit the number of parents and volunteers allowed in school, including the beginning and end of the day. Um, for everybody's safety. So we're working through the first week procedures, especially at elementary school for arrival and dismissal. And generally we're asking parents that are waiting with their children outside, they should be masked as well as students and socially distanced. Will drinking fountains be allowed? Water bottle filling stations. The drinking fountains will be turned off or blocked off, but water bottle filling stations will be kept on. We, we want to encourage uh, students drinking water. And um, of course, to do that, you, they're going to be taught to how to safely remove the masks for doing that for a very short period of time. What will class sizes be? Class sizes will probably be a little bit lower than, the, than usual because of the number of students who are full-time virtual. While we are getting some enrollment from seasonal residents, it's, it's really not drastically changing our enrollment. Now, having said that, I say that on uh, August 12th. Um, but we haven't had this huge wave of, of people um, who have seasonal residents here, residences enrolling their students. There have been some, but it hasn't been a huge wave. Do I need to tell the district if I plan on having my child attend face-to-face? -face? No. We are assuming students are face-to-face -face unless the parents enroll them in the RAM virtual learning option. So if you're planning on sending your child to school, you don't need to tell us anything. Can I switch if I choose to go virtual for my child? Yes. So if a parent has Chosen virtual, they sign the commitment form. Um, we are asking you to make a commitment for the entire semester or year. On the other hand, if I'm uncomfortable with face to face learning after a few days or weeks, can I switch my child to virtual? No. We are planning our staffing based on those who have elected to go virtual. You can switch second semester and we'll open up a registration window after Thanksgiving, but just to have, we, it's just really going to get difficult if we have students switching back and forth. I'm asked, what is the virtual learning going to look like or be like? And generally, students need to be somewhat independent and work without a lot of teacher discretion or direction. At younger grades, an adult would be needed at home to help facilitate the learning environment. In younger grades, probably count on about three to four hours a day. In older grades, about four to five hours a day. Again, that's a general rule. Will Harvard Springs teachers be the teacher of record for virtual students? Probably for K through five. We, we're trying to arrange that. But six through 12 will most likely have another Michigan certified teacher of record through a third party vendor such as Michigan Virtual. Students must be enrolled by August 15th at 4 p.m. for the virtual learning option. The principals then will contact those students' parents to complete a more formal agreement and permission slip. All virtual students 
will also complete an educational development plan. Most secondary students have one now. What we do need to know from everybody, and, and we kind of are making an assumption for the virtual students, of course, um, we know that they're not taking the bus to or from school, but we do need to know from all of our parents if their child is taking the bus to or from school, because from this, we're going to possibly shift our bus routes so that we can maintain the smallest number of students on a bus. We're also contemplating adding a sixth route. We have five right now, but to get our numbers as low as possible on each bus. So the link for the transportation survey is on our website. I would ask that uh, you please complete it if you haven't. Uh, and if you'll complete one for each child, that would be helpful. Even if you, your child never takes the bus, uh, anyways, it would be helpful to complete that. So at this time, we're going to use the chat feature in Zoom. And uh, people have, I know, asked questions. So we'll try to get through as many as we, as we can in the next few minutes. And again, I apologize for the uh, very um, upsetting incident that happened. When we do record this and put it, put it on the website, we'll be sure to take that segment out. Yeah. Just a second, Mr. Cerruto. I'm gonna actually uh, stop sharing my screen. Okay. Instead, I'm gonna... Share my um, face here. Mm -hmm. and, and else. Uh, uh, we have. Um, go ahead, Mr. Cerruto. Okay, Josh Ferguson would like to know is it possible to get a preview of the online learning environment before making a decision? Yes, um, there are um, the four the four um, platforms that we are considering, and I would say probably the two that would most likely be used would be um, Accelerate with Canvas, uh, so um, and Michigan Virtual, and if you go on our website and click on. Uh, school reopening page, you'll see a summary sheet of um, what the RAM virtual learning program looks like. And when you open that up, there's live links for each of those learning platforms. Um, we probably need to make that more visible, and I will work on that uh, uh, as soon as I can to make it a little bit more prominent to help parents out. It's a great Question, uh, Josh. Thank you. Uh, Jeff and Lee are interested um, along those lines. If you uh, have an idea of which gender would be for kindergarten and first grade. Yeah, for elementary, uh, most likely it will be accelerate um, utilizing a Canvas platform. Um, so that, that that would be the one that. Uh, uh, elementary parents for sure would want to investigate. Sarah Floyd is asking, what is the plan if we get an influx of new enrollees in the next couple of weeks, especially as more schools downstate are not virtual only And how will we maintain small class sizes and social distancing? Right. Well, Harbor Springs Public Schools is fortunate to begin with because we probably have some of the smallest class sizes in the state of Michigan. Um, our enrollment is down anyways this year. Um, it's been in a steady decline and this is about the smallest that we've had it. We, we lost a, a relatively large class of seniors, not, not huge, and for the last few years we've had smaller classes entering. You combine that with the number of students that are electing to go virtual, um, I, um, even if we do get an influx, I don't see us, uh, I don't see it being 
unmanageable. If we had to open up more sections, we would. Um, but I, I'm not seeing it yet. It, it's not to say it couldn't happen, but I still think that we'll be in a manageable place with the number of students that we have, especially choosing virtual at this point in time. At the end of um, in the presentation, you mentioned that the students would uh, have about three to four hours of work. And, it, and Jeff was wondering, does that mean three to four hours in front of the computer, or are you talking about three to four hours of the total of the K-5? It, it depends. Um, there might be an assignment to go do some writing. So a student might um, be writing by hand, might have to scan something in and submit it. Um, there might be an assignment where a student's asked to go do an investigation using some household items or outside. Um, so uh, I don't think it'll all be in front of the computer, but I think that is, especially as we move up into grade levels, the more computer time, uh, there will be more, there'll be more screen time in front of the computer. I do believe that, yeah. But uh, for, for lower L, I think that um, the curriculums are pretty developmentally appropriate. Um, we realize that it's a long time to be in front of a computer, even a couple hours uh, for a, a young person. And that's the one of the things that, that parents need to consider when they make this decision. Um, I'm sorry, we get the parents in this room, but one of the uh, questions came about is the virtual learning, again, at the elementary level. Would there still be an opportunity for one on one time with the students and the teacher? Um, it's, I, I can't say that that is guaranteed, but what I can say is that there will be a means. Um, provided for contacting the teacher, asking questions, uh, emailing back and forth. Um, there could be one-on-one -on -one time scheduled. Um, it could go by uh, grade level. We may have an elementary teacher teaching, one of our elementary teachers may be teaching a group of uh, elementary students in mixed grades, and they may get the class together, which might be a few students at kindergarten or first grade or something, and have uh, some weekly sessions or bi-weekly sessions with those students. Um, so uh, there will be some contact time with the teacher, whether it's consistently one-on-one -on -one, uh, remains to be seen. I think especially in the older grades, that may not be the case as much. Uh, Lenny Parent is asking, uh, they have a special needs student and he's going to be going to Shay, he's never had any classes there. Would they be able to take him to their class to make them feel more comfortable? Um, I'm assuming that uh, the question was, if I, I have a special needs student that's never been to a school before, um, yes, of course, um, if, if you wanted to bring that student um, to school, um, you would work through your school's principal to do that. Having said that, we can't um, make that arrangement for every single student. We do plan on having open house this year where there'll be um, a period of time where uh, students will come to school the week before school, we'll announce it. Uh, I think we've planned it for uh, it's either August 26th or 27th. Uh, the principals will, uh, I'm sure, let me know. Uh, it's one of those days and uh, my mind is blanking for a minute. But um, we've scheduled time periods for students to come at elementary. Uh, we would have students and their parents coming, but it would be staggered uh, so that we're not getting everybody in the building at one time so that each classroom has a window of time where um, just some of the class comes and then um, with their parents and then those students exit, then the other half of the class comes with the parents, everybody face mask, et cetera. Um, so 
Uh, we, we do recognize that, you know, all kids want to get in and see their teachers, see their classroom, and we are doing our best to pull that off in the safest possible way. Um, James is wondering, uh, when will we know where your teacher is and supplies the students will be needed for classes? Okay, sure. <laughs> My question is, when will we know who our teacher is and when uh, supplies are needed? Uh, the, the principals, very shortly, uh, it, and it might be posted on some of the school websites already, uh, but they will send a notice out with the supply list. Um, class lists, uh, uh, it's, it's gonna take a little bit longer. Um, it may not be until just right before school starts or before that open house when people find out. The reason is, is that you know, our numbers are fluctuating and uh, the class at elementary level, especially the class lists that were derived in the spring that the teachers worked on for the next grade level, those may have to be reshuffled because we might get uh, 10 kids who are gonna be engaged in virtual learning in one of the classrooms and zero kids in the other classroom at a grade level. So we may need to shuffle them. We may need to also hold a little bit if uh, there is a chance that we get some uh, influx of new enrollment um, as we get closer to the start of school. So class lists are gonna probably not be published at elementary until just um, before that open house period on the 26th um, or 27th. Um, at secondary, um, schedules are made um, and there'll be a point where students can look into uh, power school and see what their schedule is um, shortly. Um, the thing is, again, uh, if, depending on enrollment, we may have to reshuffle even secondary schedules if we're um, getting some sections that have a lot of pull from students going online virtually full time. Um, so uh, even if uh, when we do make secondary schedules available to students, um, they could they are subject to change if we need to reshuffle the schedules to balance classes out. Um, another question with the uh, you mentioned the virtual part is that going to be uh, similar to school last year, and will we be updated before second semester starts, or when they can make any choices? Great question. So, is if for those face-to-face -face students, if we have to flip the switch and go virtual, is it going to look like last year? And the answer is no. Um, the um, assignments will be graded. Um, there'll be more work. Um, we need to be able to account for um, learning a little bit more. The state in the spring waived a lot of requirements and we were all new to this. Uh, now that we've done it a little bit and uh, we feel our staff will be a little bit better prepared uh, we have a new learning platform, um, you know, that expectations will probably be uh, higher. They will be higher uh, if we do have to go to an online environment due to school closure. Uh, in terms of the dates for opening up registration for uh, second semester virtual learning, that would be uh, shortly after Thanksgiving. We'll open up a window uh, so that we can, number one, give those parents and children uh, who registered just for first semester a chance to register for second semester if they want or to join their classes at semester change in January for face-to-face. -face. Likewise, that we will give the parents and students a chance who were face-to-face -face first semester and think they want a online environment, a full online environment second semester they can choose that. There'll be an opportunity after Thanksgiving to make that choice. 
not only addressing if there will be opportunities for those that choose online options to work on projects virtually with their classmates? The answer to that, unfortunately, is no. Um, the, if, if, I'm my, if I'm choosing for my child to go fully online, then that's the expectation, uh, that they're fully online. Um, there won't be that opportunity to zoom into the classroom with the other kids uh, or do projects with them. We, we truly want our staff that's teaching face-to-face -to, -face to be solely focused on the kids that are in front of them. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, complexities, uh, as you know, um, and I was, uh, our staff is absolutely incredible and I want to make sure that they have that their only concern is those children that are in front of them and not having uh, to worry about students that are virtually online. Um, so if one of our teachers, we could have a scenario where one of our teachers does teach online, that will be their only responsibility is a set of kids that they are teaching full-time virtual and we would hire another teacher to replace that teacher for face-to-face -face. or we may be in a position of hiring a teacher um, for teaching those students that are uh, all online and that will be their only responsibility. Um, we have those decisions are made, um, you know, we, we have uh, uh, contract issues that we need to follow when we have positions open um, and um, we need to follow a process for who teaches. If we have some only online teaching positions, uh, we need to follow the proper process for uh, placing the, those teachers in that position. Um, a question about uh, IEPs and 504s accommodations for students who are enrolled in virtual learning. That's a great question. Uh, for students with IEPs uh, and 504s enrolled in virtual learning, um, that's a great question. And again, there's a lot of complexities involved. It's really considered a change of placement for that student. So we'll be contacting those students and it may require a meeting of the IEP team to determine um, is that really the right placement for that student? Um, how can we support that student? Um, so there's, there's going to be, um, there's, there's probably with those students that have elected that to the um, uh, online registration process, We'll be in touch with those students and um, we'll need to get some more information and possibly some meetings with the IEP team to determine if, if that's uh, the best option for that student as a team and how can we support that student uh, or students uh, if that is the option that is chosen. Uh, a question from Barry to uh, clarification on the virtual side. Is each grade level potentially going to have a different platform? And are the virtual teachers already in place on each platform? The question is on the virtual side, is each grade level going to have a particular platform? I would imagine K through five is going to have uh, one platform. Uh, six through eight might also have the same platform. Um, so uh, our goal is to, um, make things as simple as possible. Um, have the virtual teachers already been hired? No. I mean, they may be hired. They may be present Harbor Springs teachers. Um, so I, I can't say for sure, but they've not been identified. I think that's the best way to put it. They could be new hires. They could be Harbor Springs teachers and new hires then slip into the classroom. These are, you know, tough decisions to make, uh, and uh, that's why we need to get a firm handle on the enrollment as soon as possible. So August 15th is the deadline 
we, we need to have those commitments by them so we can make these decisions. And then a, a flurry of, of questions that are somewhat related to the same. Uh, are you going to offer band at the middle school level? Uh, what are the class sizes going to be? How many have signed up for online learning? Um, a lot of those are still in motion. So, I think so yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's good questions. The questions are, are we going to have band at middle school? The answer is yes. We um, are figuring out how to do that safely in a socially distanced manner. We've procured things like bell covers, um, uh, guards uh, for flute players. Um, Mr. Uh, Ruddy and Mr. Barna are continually working through that process. There might be a lot of um, outdoor practice. There might be a lot of um, practice where we're just working on our fingering and notes um, you know the, but we are planning on having band at both middle school and high school we've just completed a pretty successful band camp at high school socially distanced outside uh, masks on except for when um, playing or marching um, we know that we can't be outside for band the whole year obviously, so we are working on ways to spread kids out, uh, put whatever measures we can to mitigate, such as bell covers. Um, class sizes, again, I, at middle school, we don't know that for sure. Um, you know, they're generally pretty low. Uh, we had a very small fifth grade come up. There was only two sections in fourth grade, but it's a three section fifth grade. So wow, we've got pretty low numbers. Um, when you add that the numbers of kids that are choosing virtual, hopefully the numbers be a little bit lower. Um, we just don't know. I can tell you this, uh, I looked at it earlier today and probably about 11% of our students so far have opted for an online experience um about 11 percent but no it varies but you know it's all it's all k through 12 um and it's changing you know it's um so um and the registration window is open until saturday at uh, 4 p.m uh, a question with the sanitation process are kids going to be able to play on playground equipment and how are we handling uh, Cleaning and sanitizing of playground equipment. All right, how do we handle cleaning and sanitizing of playground equipment? We probably aren't going to be out there sanitizing it every day. Um, it's not required in the uh, roadmap. What we need to do is just hand washing, hand washing, hand washing. Um, you know, we're we're finding out a little bit more and more about you know, how the virus spreads, uh, touch surfaces seem to be less and less the factor. It's more aerosol and droplets. Um, I'm not an expert, uh, it's only what I hear, but, um, you know, there will be some regular sanitization, but it's not going to happen on a daily basis. Hand washing immediately after recess will happen on a daily basis. Um, for ninth grade students who are learning virtually for the first semester, will they have an orientation if they go back to face to face for the second semester? That's a great question. The question was if ninth graders are learning face to face, excuse me, Vir virtually yeah. first semester <laughs> and go back face to face second semester, uh, I guarantee you, Mr. Plackmeyer will give a personal orientation for those students and make it very entertaining as well. And then uh, John is asking about sixth grade, can the students choose something other than band or PE due to, uh, due to COVID? So, um, if, that's a really good question. Um, that's the first question I had on that. Who asked that? Uh, John Crawford. Way to go, Mr. Crawford. It's a great <laughs> question. This is called Stump the Superintendent. Um, 
I'll talk to Mrs. Kaiser about that. Uh, we would not need to know soon and we'll talk about that and get that out there. I can, we can understand and appreciate that concern. Uh, I don't know about PE, um, that's, that's a required course, um, but certainly we could talk about band. Um, you know, I, we'll, we'll discuss that, uh, that um, with Mrs. Kaiser. I think at the, that, that could be a seventh and eighth grade issue too, um, as well. It's not just sixth grade. Uh, we think for high school, we pretty much got it covered because we've already seen the kids at band camp and we know who's in and who's not in. So um, I'll talk with the principals and we'll get something out on that. Thank you. That's a great question. Um, one of the parents would really want to clarify that if students are taking the virtual classes, will they still be getting uh, HSPS technology, one to one technology? In other words, will laptops be provided for them? The, so the question is if they're taking virtual class, the students taking virtual classes, will the district? supply the technology? The answer is yes. Uh, we will continue to supply a one-to-one -one device for all of our students, those taking virtual, and not only that, provide technical support. So if something goes wrong, they'll contact Mr. Ceruto or one of the technicians, bring it in, put out, a, um, there's, there'll be a, an email that they can go to, let them know, bring it in, get it worked on and get it back as soon as possible or a replacement while it's being worked on. Um, that's not to say that, um, let's say I have a, a K-4 student that is on an iPad and I, my student would do much better with um, another type of computer, one with a keyboard and actual uh, laptop or computer, and if I want to um, certainly supply that, uh, absolutely, that student can use his own device as well uh, if they're fully online. Um, <laughs> Josh is asking if a student is virtual and we have a snow day, will the virtual student still be expected to participate in online learning? Oh, I love the question. <laughs> the question is, uh, you probably heard it, but do kids who are virtual get virtual snow days? Um, I got to say no. They, they may get, you might get a phone call because you're still a Harbor Springs student. You might get a phone call uh, and have to watch a silly video that I did. Uh, but you, you probably won't have a, a snow day that day. It, 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 it might de depend too if it's a Harbor Springs teacher that teaches your class or if it's uh, through a third party vendor that teaches your class. Um, because your teacher might actually be sitting down in um, Lansing or something uh, and there's not a snow day down there. so. Well, you have, you have a fan in the videos from Bill Schwab. He says he loves them. So make sure that you. Oh, Mr. Them. Schwab. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, and, I, and I guess, you know, at this point, really, you've done a great job of covering a lot of them. And unfortunately, some of them, as we both said, some of them, we just won't know the answers until later on this week when we get some more kids more popular. Um, I'm just going to look and see who else. Uh, wait. You've done great. You've covered, you've covered a lot of the ground. Um, there's some specific scenarios that have been asked about, and, uh, and I've, I've let them know that the flow chart that you had mentioned earlier and shown earlier, which we'll be putting on the website, that is, is we've worked with with the health department will help answer some of those questions. Um, boy, I, I think you've done a great job. Thank you so much. Oh. Where exactly is the bus registration located on the website? I think we just have to highlight some of these links for. Uh, Let me uh, share my screen.
Um, and we can show you what's on the website. So if you go to our website, and you scroll down a little bit, um, you're gonna click this link. Click here for fall 2020 school reopening. And now you're on our reopening page. So, um, right here, uh, click here for transportation form. So when you click on that, it takes you to a survey and it's as easy as that. Um, likewise, If you click on the virtual online learning registration form, that takes you to that site as well. And again, the, um, once you complete this next week, we're gonna start sending out permission slips from the principals for you to complete further. And a little bit of information about completing um, what's called an educational development plan that's required by the state of Michigan. So um, I, I mentioned earlier that there's an opportunity to, to go in and look at some of these online platforms a little bit, the curriculum. Um, so if you click on the virtual learning summary flyer, uh, you'll notice that each one of these are live links that take you to their websites. So what we'll do is uh, make that a little bit more explicit. Um, moving forward, I'll work on that and get that on the website by tomorrow. Um, I think I think we'll wrap up with this one. Um, one of the uh, Questions come up is uh, talk about internet access, whether the paper versions of the virtual learning that there was in the spring. That's that's a really good question. If I don't have any internet access in my house, um, and I will, and I there's two two levels to that. Let's say I'm a face to face student and we go virtual, and we we have to flip the switch, as I've said before, and I don't have internet access, we will provide paper, <coughs> excuse me, paper copies for you or a workbook to work out of. It will be very difficult um, to choose that uh, virtual learning option if I don't have internet access. Um, if that's a concern uh, for you, uh, please talk to me um, personally about that. Send me an email and we can talk through that. Well, Mr. Barry, at this point, I'd like to, uh, we've got a number of messages that uh, well, thanks from the community for uh, our support and all the time uh, that, uh, that we've been putting in. And uh, we've been very uh, appreciative of these uh, town hall meetings that we've uh, allowed uh, them to have. Yeah, I'm to ask these questions. So, I, so thank you for the I appreciate that. I appreciate the community's patience with, <coughs> with <coughs> excuse me, with us. Um, you could imagine that there's a lot of layers and complexities, and I will just say that we have the best group of teachers and staff and administrators anywhere, anywhere in the state. I'm so proud of them and they care so much. And um, one of the things I'm telling my teachers is, you know, this year especially, it's so important to worry about our students' mental health and their mental health too. Um, we've got to get through this together. And, you know, that, that really takes the priority, um, you know, making sure that 
everyone's okay. Not just physically okay, but uh, mentally and socially, emotional. Um, that, that's really the priority, um, right with keeping everybody safe. So um, I truly appreciate it. Um, this is not perfect. We're making mistakes along the way. Uh, we're going to continue to make mistakes. Um, if you continue to be flexible with us and patient, that's appreciated. So having said that, I, I wish you all a good night. Again, don't hesitate to contact me or the staff if there's any questions. And um, we'll see you soon. Thank you.